Did you bring your Bibles this morning? Good. Turn them on or open them up. We'll be throughout the passage of Scripture. You'll find in your outline, I, I mean, I'm sorry, you find in your bulletin an outline for our message this morning. We are looking at how to live a 24-7 for God. How to have, and we're going to look at one day, a 24-hour period, period that we should be modeling each and every day of our lives. And so I hope, if you weren't here last week, uh, I hope that um, you have a backpack. And you say, I didn't bring my pack backpack with me today. Well, I hope you did. And you'll see why I say that in just a few moments. Uh, because more of a metaphor than, than act, the actual backpack. But if you remember last week, we talked about what we do in the morning hours. Even if you're a nighttime person, basically the first thing you do in the day. And, and as a result, uh, I mean, uh, 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 within that message, I, I shared with you about speaking, uh, spe you know, speak it. That is, speak words of praise and worship to God. I used a megaphone to say, shout it. I think that was the term I used, shout it. We're to, we wake up in the morning and we ought to be praising and worshiping and offering songs of praise. And so we shout it. We put that into our backpack of faith. And then as we're shouting and praising, I use the illustration of a baby blanket. The baby blanket represents God's love. You know, um, to feel it. Feel God's love. Understand that you have worth with God. And we need... Hear what I have to say. We know God loves us, but we need to be reminded on a daily basis about just how much he loves us. And the baby blankets brings us comfort, so we, we're to fill it. Until we, so we fill our backpack with the baby blanket. And then we talked about hiding God's word. God speaks to us through the Bible. The Bible is representative of God speaking to us and hiding God's word. Treasure it. We bank that in our hearts. And then finally, as part of our ritual in the morning, we're stuffing our backpack of faith. I used a coffee cup, a coffee mug, or a tea mug, if you're not a toffee drinker, or a hot chocolate mug, whatever you want to call this, where you sit down and you converse with God, and you speak words, of, words to God. You speak it. You hide it, you speak it, you, 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 you do that with God, and you have a backpack of faith. You've made a connection with God. And now, your day begins, and you step out the door, what do you do with your backpack of faith? We're about to enter the marketplace of ideas. Do you take this with you, or do you lay it down someplace? Do you use it when it's convenient for you, or do you set it aside when it's not? This is what we're going to be talking about this morning, is, is not so much the morning hours, but that, those hours between 9 to 5, give or take, give or take, could be earlier, could be later, but we spend the vast majority of our time, at least a third of our time, if not more, in that period of time, in the morning and evening hours, is that middle part there. That's what I want to talk to, us, I talk to you about this morning. About the illustration of your backpack of faith, the things that you need to bring with you. You've made a connection to, with God. You've had your time of worship. You, you've, you've remembered God's love in your heart. You have banked his words within your heart. You have shared with him. You've made this connection. Now you enter this, this realm of the marketplace of ideas. It's time for you to go to work or to go to the gym or go to school. Or if you're retired, go wherever it is you go during the afternoon or during the day. Whatever you do, do you take your backpack of faith with you? as we enter. What do you do with that connection? And here's the problem I think we have. Please bear with me. The problem I think we have is this. And you might, I, don't, I didn't put this in your bulletin, so write this at the top of your bulletin someplace. This is the problem. It's called a compartmentalized faith. 
I compartmentalize faith. This is the person who gives God priority some of the time, but not all the time. It's referred to as pick and choose Christianity. In other words, it's where you pick to live a Christ-like life some of the time, and then you choose to live a Christless life at other times. And the best thing that I can bring to mind that will illustrate this for everybody is the ads we see about Las Vegas. What happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. Compartmentalizing. You see where I'm going with this? Well, we don't, we don't go to Las Vegas. Okay, let's, let's bring it back to where we are, where we too live, in Tucson. Okay, let's bring it back to where we live. <clears throat> Sometimes, some of us, lives one, we live one way at church and another way between the hours of 9 to 10, Monday through Friday, or Saturday. See, we come to East Tucson, and maybe, just maybe, you've been inspired. Be it the sermons may be long, but you've become inspired. Okay? You feel good. You're walking kind of like on a high. You feel like passing out flowers. You feel like giving hugs to strangers even, they don't, even though they don't want it. Because you feel so good. It's been a lovely day. And you're feeling so lovely. You're whistling. In fact, that love carries even into the car as you get in the car. And, and you start driving home and you realize there's a hitchhiker. And, you, and then for a brief moment you say, I'm going to pick that hitchhiker up. And then as you approach, you see he's wearing a hockey mask and you think better of it. But you get home. And you do added chores around the house. Your wife wants to send you to the grocery store. No problem, it's a lovely day. You go to the grocery store. You get what you need, you come back to your car. You even take the cart and you put it away in the, in the cart corral. Unlike what other people do, because it's such a lovely day. Everything is going good. You might even mow your neighbor's lawn, or in our case, rake the gravel. All because you've had a lovely day. You've had a faith-filled day. And you have this lovely feeling all about you. And then Monday comes. Monday hits like a ton of bricks. You hit the world running. You arrive in the marketplace of ideas with your agenda, with your ambition, with your pride. And then somebody crosses you up, and all of a sudden it's like they turn the radio on, and you hear she's lost that loving feeling. <laughs> it's Monday. It's time to go to work. That feeling was yesterday. This is today. And whatever I felt yesterday goes right in the toilet today. Game on. Church was yesterday. Today I'm at work. What a difference a day makes. You see where I'm going with that? Do you take your backpack of faith with you throughout the day? That's my question. Do you allow your faith to invade every piece of your life? Every part of who you are? So this week, this morning, I'd like... To Take some time to talk about this faith that you have, you have in your backpack. In the morning hours, you've connected with God. By the way, you go, well, I'm going to church Sunday, so I don't need to get up and connect with God this morning. Well, you better. Every day, 24-7, right? So you got your, did you bring your, faith, uh, faith pay, your backpack of faith with you this morning? Or did you leave it at home thinking you're going to get another one? We have more backpacks for those of you that, don't, that didn't get one last week. So don't, don't fret. We have plenty up front. But what do you do? What do we do? We compartmentalize. So I'm going to encourage you not to leave it behind or do not set it down throughout your day. Carry it with you always. So taking your faith with you. 
the first thing we need to do is live it. Live it. That's already in your bulletin. You've got a space there. What's that mean? It means your faith in action throughout the day. Faith in action. Your faith in action throughout the day. You've heard it said, and some people on Wednesday also, you've heard it said, you need to walk your talk. No, you don't. No, you don't. You need to walk God's walk. Because we talk big. We have big talk. It's not about us walking, uh, walking our talk. It's about us walking God's walk. Does that make sense? Because if we, if we walk our talk, we're in trouble come Monday morning. We need to walk God's walk. That's the sign of a transformed life. Jesus says you will know who my followers are because they have what? Love for one another. Jesus doesn't say you'll know my followers by the bumper stickers on their car. You'll know my followers by the, by the crosses that they wear. He doesn't say you'll know my followers by the t-shirts, the, the Christian t-shirts they're wearing. No, you know what Jesus says? In Matthew 7, 20, yes, as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Faith in actions. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I want to try to be real. Just like you, I live in the real world. I live in the real, real world. I understand that it is difficult to go from this place on a Sunday and then take your backpack with you throughout the week. But wait a minute, I'm not talking about your backpack, pick filling your backpack up here on Sunday so it'll last you all week. I'm talking about the backpack you have packed every morning before you go off to work or go out into the marketplace of ideas. Every morning you need to be filling this backpack up. That's our problem, number one. But if you're filling the backpack up, number two, do you take it with you or do you just leave it back at the house? I know how tough that can be. During the day, you might completely forget about God. In the morning, <laughs> in the morning, you take out your three by five cards. Remember last week I told you, take out three by five cards and find words of praise and worship and write those verses down on your, uh, on your three by five cards, remember? So you're being diligent about doing that, okay? And, you, and God gave you a verse of scripture and you wrote that thing down, but you hit the busy world. You're in such a hurry, okay? And something happens to slow you down and test your patience. I got a cute little video. It's funny. Uh, I think it's, it's apropos to how we live our lives. But it shows us how quick we set our backpack down. Watch this. <laughs> See, something comes along in your life. And it Monday hits, it may be something simple. You may get stuck in a line at the grocery store. I don't know, but you always have a hard time by picking the right lane in the grocery store. Or it may be at a drive through and the person in front of you hasn't, you know, they've been sitting there looking at the menu, and then they pull forward, and now they still haven't chosen what they wanted to have for their meal yet. You know what I'm saying? But the verse that you wrote that morning... On your 3 by 5 card says this in Colossians 1.11. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you, will have, so, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy. You see how quickly we can lay our backpack down depending on what's going on in our lives. Go to the MVD, or in our case, MVD, and understand just how difficult it is to maintain that backpack on your back, right? Right? Am I, am, I, are, am I connecting with you yet? Okay. Sometimes 
in the world world, these lesser issues can cause us to drop our backpack. And if the lesser issues do it, what about the more major issue? So let me show you the key to 24 living, 24 hour living, in recognizing when I or you or we lay our backpack down, okay? And, and the image I want to put in your head is this. If you have traveled post 9-11, you know how unbelievable security can be at airports these days, right? You spend your time, you go through security, you get through the terminal and you're waiting at your gate because you're there two hours early. And you got your backpack with this, with you or your carry-on item that you're, whatever it is you're taking on, your, the airplane, and, and you got the best seat because you're flying Southwest Air, so you got the best seat to try to get in the line before anybody else, right? And you set your backpack down, but you set your backpack down to save your seat, and then you go into one of the convenience stores there in the terminal, and you leave your backpack. And as soon as you leave your backpack, you know what happens, right? Siren sound. You know, guard dogs appear, TSA agents come, and one of them is an aggressive guy with a hand wand, right? <coughs> and, all, and you come back and chaos is broken out because you left your backpack to go get a stick of gum. You didn't think it was a big deal. In fact, you still don't know it's a big deal until somebody has to bail you out of jail because you left your backpack there unattended. When we do the same, when we lay our back back down, chaos breaks out. And the chaos not only affects us and the blessings God wants to have in your life, it affects everybody around you as well. I want you to have that picture in your mind as we think about living 24-7 and, and understanding we need to carry our backpack with us everywhere we go. And, and we need to examine ourselves. And we come to church every Sunday, I hope, to, to help us with that examination, that self-examination of how, how our faith is growing and what we're doing with it. And in, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, the Apostle Paul says, Examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself. Surely you know that Jesus is among you. If not... You have failed the test of genuine faith. So I want us to live a 24-7 faith. And let me tell you what we do. We lay our backpack down when integrity is required. Not just the little things, now we're talking about the big things. When integrity is required. Now, do you find any of these integrity situations familiar to you as I read them off. For example, your backpack stays at home and you go out at night with your friends and colleagues and God is nowhere to be seen. Or better yet, you slip your backpack onto one arm and you laugh off-color joke. Or maybe you're late to an appointment because you have totally procrastinated your morning and didn't get ready on time. But by the time you get to your appointment, you leave your backpack in the car and tell that person that traffic was bad and you couldn't do anything about it. Integrity. You love to cut and paste the, the cut and paste function so much on your computer that it becomes very easy for, to plagiarize an entire term paper. And your backpack's nowhere to be found. It's a business dinner. And a lot of drinking is going on. Your self-control is in your backpack, but your backpack is in the trunk because it really doesn't fit well with your attire. See, any of those sound familiar? See, we have a tendency to, to drop our backpack when integrity is inquired. And understand that integrity is connected to our faith. In 1 Chronicles 29, 13, the writer says, I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. God loves his children when they display integrity. Proverbs 11.20, the Lord detests people with crooked hearts, but he delights with those with integrity. Circle the word delights, and circle the word delights and detests. Delight and detests. 
Do you see those words? Circle those words. When we're talking about integrity, I want you now to choose. We lay our backpack down when integrity is required. We also lay our backpack down when money is involved. Well, you say, well, sounds to me like that's just a subcategory of integrity. Well, yes, it is. But also understand that we usually, when, we, when, we, when integrity is involved, it usually costs us something with, to have our integrity. Because there's usually a cost to be paid. How many people do you know would drop their backpack for a buck? And don't answer too loudly. Let me give you some issues. Another list. Like taking a tax write-off when you didn't deserve it. Finding, failing to record a cash transaction and you just stick the cash in your pocket. Or better yet, somebody gives you change back that was more than what they should have. Do you take it? Spending company money on personal items. Stealing somebody else's sell lead. Or better, or better yet, you're such a good salesperson that you can manipulate somebody to buy some, something that you know they don't even need. Money is not evil. Hear me, folks. Money is not evil. It's what we do for money that causes us to drop our backpack. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds... The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It doesn't say money is the root of all kinds of evil, but the love of money is. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierce themselves with many sorrows. In Ecclesiastics, it also says, those who love money will never have enough. How meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. Hear me. Money in the hands of those who are spiritually mature has the potential to do amazing things. But those people never drop their backpack. They carry their backpack around with them all the time. Integrity is involved when money is involved. If these two haven't hit you yet, there's a third. We lay our backpack down when the pace is rushed. When the pace is rushed. The pace of life is also often so insane Intuitively, we know that's not, the, that's not the way we want to live our lives. We don't want to live our lives rushed and, 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 rushed and, 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 and a fast pace. In fact, I, I take that back. If things slow down, we get, sometimes we get irritated. Remember their video? Those sloths was just doing what sloths do. Everybody has slowed down. The rabbit, the rabbit's in such a hurry you can hardly understand what she has to say. I think maybe some of us like that rush. But hurry and fatigue is not part of God's plan for us. It depletes our capacity for compassion and connectedness. And some of you are going through life right now, listen to me, some of you are going through life right now so exhausted by your obligations or so obsessed with work that it is dominating who you are and how God made you. You don't have the energy, you don't have the space, the freedom, the ability to have a genuine faith that God wants you to have. And then you say, I don't have time to serve. I don't have time to be connected with other people. God doesn't want you to live that way. God doesn't want that for your life. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to take this time, just bear with me. Ladies, I want to talk to the men. I just want to talk to the men in our congregation. There may be more of the ladies in here, but I want to talk to just the men. And I'm not talking to the men just because they're bigger sinners than you are. I'm talking to men because I am one. And I think I can relate to men, okay? So men, listen to me. I think, I think... 
Most of us are goal-oriented. As men, I think we're goal-oriented. We want a destination. We are achievers. When we go shopping, we don't browse. We go right after it. We hunt it down, we kill it, and we bag it, and we take it home. That's what we do. It's part of our DNA. And we do the same thing with our relationships. We have a checklist. And somewhere in our checklist, as, we, as, as our frontal lobes begin to think properly, we go, we need a wife. And so we go after one. And we'll do the darndest things, things that we would never do otherwise, like write and recite poetry, buy flowers. Some of us may even put deodorant on. Because, man, we've got a goal. <coughs> My goal is to get that wife. And finally, we find one, we latch on to them, and our goal is complete. We have what we want. Life is great. So we go on to the next goal. The next goal is provide for that wife. And we go after it to the extent that we neglect our family, our spouses, our children, and our relationship. Because we've got this goal. Now ladies, I want you to join me now. Guys, can you relate to what I'm saying? Now I want the ladies to join us. And I will start by saying, ladies and gentlemen, are you really too busy for God? How self-important do you think you really are? If you say, I'm too busy for God, what you're saying to God is, God, what I'm doing is more important than what you want me to do and what you have for me. And if you say that to God, I bet you anything. I'll bet you anything you're wrong. You don't like to be told you're wrong. You don't want to get to the end of your life and say, God, I never lived out my faith. I never served in a, in a ministry. I never got connected with other believers because work had dominated. And folks, let me tell you what. I've never heard anybody on their deathbed say, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. Yeah. Ever. Folks, this is your one and only life that God has given you. There is no dress rehearsal. This is it. Are you following what I have to say? If you need to make changes, then make them. Make the tough choice. I don't know what that is for you. I have no idea what that is for you. But I know how I want, my, how I want to live my life. I want to live my life all day long for God. I don't want to set my pack, backpack down or slump it over my arm, put it in my trunk, leave it in my car. I want to take my backpack with me. I don't want to set it down. My guess is you don't want to either. I don't think you want to either. So, live it. Live it. Faith in action. What are you doing in your faith during the day? What is it? What is it that, what creates situation that you don't have a backpack with you. So let me back up for just a minute. I got two backpacks right here. Two. This is a whole lot easier to carry. But let me ask you, what's in it? What's in it? There's nothing in it. It's worthless. 
What good is a backpack if it's not filled with something? It's just a decoration sitting up here on the, on the table. I gave you an empty backpack last week to start filling it up in the morning when you get up. It's, put, it, put it, hang it on the wall, hang it from your ceiling fan as it goes around to get your attention. I don't know what you need to do to remind you that God, is, God wants you to make a connection, connection with Him in the morning so you have a backpack filled with faith, a connection with God that you can carry around with you all the time. So when, when somebody says, like I said, 20% of the people you come in contact is not going to like you anyway. And you don't feel love from them. You can reach in your backpack and pull out that blanket and know that you're loved by God. When your boss thinks you're worthless, you can pull out your blanket and say, hmm. <laughs> I'm loved and worth by God. When somebody says, hey, we're going to take an extra long lunch today, nobody's going to know. You can say, I have, your word, God, have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Integrity. You go to the convenience store. And you need $3 back. Instead, they give you $22 back because one of them they mistaken as a 10 and you stick it in your pocket and you walk off. Thy word have I hid in my heart so that I don't sin against you. I have banked that in my heart. God feels so far from me today. It's Tuesday. The world's coming down on me and I'm not connected with God. Did you take your coffee cup out? Did you talk to God about it? You see where I'm going? You see where I'm going with this? When somebody, when you pull up to in and out, and all you get is the in, and you can't get out, do you have that Bible verse saying, make it all, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. To remind you that God is with you. You see where I'm going with it? See, we go out into the marketplace of ideas and we fail to live our faith in action because our bag is empty. And for those of you that are filling your bag in the morning, don't leave it at home when you walk out the door. Bring it with you. Always. If you can't, you know... Sometimes you put it in your back, you can't see it. Maybe you just need to carry it and hug it and keep it close to you to remember who, you, who do you belong to? I'm a child of God. And we are to live our life out in action. That faith ought to be put to work. James says, you show, me, you show me your faith, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. A faith that has no action is worthless. Worthless. What is keeping you from acting? I just want you to bow your head and close your eyes right now this morning. What is it that is keeping you from being the person God wants you to be. What have you done that has caused you to put your backpack down or to set it aside? What have you, what haven't you done? Maybe that's a better word too. What haven't you done? Confession's good for the soul, bad for the reputation. But folks, listen to me. Nobody's looking around. Your eyes are closed. Your head's bowed. Nobody's looking around. Listen to me. God knows your reputation, and He still loves you. He still loves you. He knows maybe you have set the back back down. He still loves you. He still wants to be a part of your life. 
I'm not here to make you feel guilty, but I pray the Holy Spirit's convicting you this morning. I pray that God is just convicting you this morning to say, I don't want to live like that anymore. I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to live it, to live it out each and every day. Father, we are here this morning. I'm begging you, Father, in my life, I know I struggle with this. And if I struggle with it, Father, I know others do also. Help us as a child of yours to spend time with you, to walk as you walk, to love as you love, to forgive as you forgive, to take a stand where you would take a stand, to have compassion where you would have compassion. Where there's integrity involved, Father, where there's money involved, when the pace is too, too rushed, that's when we need to cling to our faith, Father. Help us to do that. Thank you for your words. Thank you, Father, for your comfort and your love. Thank you for listening to us and responding to us and connecting with us because you are Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And I pray for that individual who doesn't know you this morning that needs this faith-filled life, a transformed life. That they will take a stand and say, I need to get rid of my pride, I need to get rid of my ego, I need to get rid of those things that prevent me from coming to you. Father, I pray that they will come forward this morning and make that commitment. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask Carl to come up to the front. If you have a commitment you need to make, the altar is open. You can make it to God. You don't need to tell Carl about it. You can come up and tell God about it. If you are here seeking Jesus in your life, Carl's, can be, Carl's up front. He can share, share with you how to do that. And, he, and I'll tell you, it's not comfortable for him, for him to be up here, but he's going to come up here anyway because he's going to put his faith in action. Let's all stand and let's, let's sing together. And you come right now as we sing. <laughs>